So today we are going to look at these things called organelles, which are the parts of the cells. Now in your note packet, you should have a page that's a chart. Two sides, there's a chart. And you'll see all these names of organelles listed. Now, I don't have the chart with me, but I think I can remember what it says. I'm going to tell you what to put where. Now, one of the columns says plant or animals. I want you to scratch that out. Because we've been talking about eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Remember, prokaryotes are cells that do not have a nucleus. Pro means no, no nucleus. If you're a prokaryote, we automatically call you a bacteria. Eukaryotes, you means do, they do have a nucleus. And some prokaryotes have these parts of the cells. All eukaryotes are going to have these parts of the cells. But then there's some parts that are plants and animals only. But I'm going to let you know what to fill in where when you look at that chart. So, we're going to be looking at organelles. I call the cell a city. And I consider organelles to be parts of the city. They're buildings. And different buildings, the people inside of them do different jobs. So you're going to hear me comparing the parts of the cell to buildings or things that you would find in a town. Now the first thing I want you to write, well, you'll see plasma membrane on your chart. And you'll see where it talks about function. What I want you to write for function is the plasma membrane controls what's allowed in and what's allowed out. So the plasma membrane is very much like a gate. And so in the so this you can see how this would look like a gate. So with the function, I want you to write that it controls what's allowed in and what's allowed out. It's also very much like a screen door or a screen on your window. You know if screen doors have holes in them. So if you're small enough to get through those holes, you can go back and forth whenever you want to. Well, you're going to have little gaps in this. This is what's called the phospholipid bilayer, which we're going to talk about in a second. But under function, you put controls what goes in and out of the cell. I want you to note that it's found in all cells. In order to be a cell, you have to have a plasma membrane. So every cell in nature has the plasma membrane. And under unique characteristics or other characteristics or whatever that last column says, I want you to write it's what's called a phospholipid bilayer. This is a phospholipid, and this will kind of be the picture that you draw. Just draw a bunch of circles with squiggly lines coming down. It's a bilayer, which means it's two layers. Phospholipid, these are phosphates, and these are lipids. And when we talked about lipids, I mentioned that phospholipids are the one of the most important fats you can have in your body. Basically, every cell in our body has this double layer of fat around it. And you guys know that fats are nonpolar, which means they don't dissolve in water, which is a good thing. Because if we did not have this layer of fat around ourselves, we wouldn't be here. We'd be a puddle of water. So function controls what's allowed in and out. It's found in every single cell in nature. And a unique characteristic of it is it's called a phospholipid bilayer. And that's the little picture that you drew of it. Now, somewhere on your sheet, you'll see what's called the cytoplasm. Now, anytime you see the root word cyte, cyte means cell. And plasm is a goo. Now this is, it says it's a clear fluid inside of the cell. In reality, it is a thick goo. So its function is basically to hold the parts of cell in place. I always consider this to be like a jello salad. You may or may not know what that is. But sometimes people, when they make jello, they stick pieces of fruit in there. And when the jello gets hard, the fruit's just kind of like stuck there. Well, that's what the cytoplasm does. The cytoplasm is, is thick. And so the organelles are just kind of stuck in place. So its function is basically to hold the organelles. And again, it's found in all cells. Prokaryotes have it, and eukaryotes have it. There's really nothing we can draw a picture of because it's just the goo on the inside. So under its characteristic, it's a clear fluid inside the cell. It is mostly water, but it's thicker than what this makes it out to see. Then, somewhere on your page, you have this thing called a nucleus. Now, 
its function, I call the nucleus the safe. And everybody knows what a safe does. A safe is where you put your valuables. Well, your DNA is the most important valuable that your cell has. Your DNA is a cookbook that contains all these recipes in it. And that's what we call genes. And genes are there to tell you how to make proteins. So your cells work because of the proteins that they make. So your brain cells work the way that they do because they make one kind of protein. While your stomach makes a different protein, that's why your stomach cells are different from your brain. So I call the nucleus the safe. So you can kind of think of it as a bank. And the job of the nucleus is basically to protect your DNA. And since your DNA tells your cells what to do, the nucleus is basically in charge of everything. So with function, it protects your DNA and it controls everything the cell does. Now, it is found only in eukaryotes. So like I said, we crossed out where it said plant and animals. And we're just going to put type of cell. Well, the plasma membrane is in all cells. Cytoplasm is in all cells. In the case of the nucleus, it's only found in eukaryotes. Remember, you means do. They do have a nucleus. And for a picture, you guys know the nucleus is usually drawn as a circle or a dot in the middle of the cell. And what's really cool about the nucleus, so as an extra characteristic, it has its own double membrane. Because remember, it's a safe. And so the thicker the safe, the harder it is to get inside of it. And the purpose of the nucleus is to protect your DNA. Now, with the nucleus, also, you don't have this column on your page, but over where it talks about unique characteristics, that double membrane has a name. So where it talks about the double membrane here, that double membrane is called the nuclear envelope. And so basically, those are the walls of the safe. Excuse me for a moment. So its job is to separate the nucleus. It's the walls of the safe. And it's also a double membrane which means it also has two phospholipid bilayers. So basically, your nucleus also has a layer of fat around it. Well, if your cell's mostly water, you don't want the, you don't want the safe to dissolve, or the DNA wouldn't be protected anymore. Now, also in the nucleus, you have something called the nucleolus. So if this was the nucleus, the nucleolus is that guy right there. The nucleolus is a little bacteria, believe it or not, that has formed a relationship with your cells. And the job of the nucleolus is to make something called a ribosome. Now you have ribosomes on your sheet, so I kind of have to go ahead and introduce them to you. Right. Ribosomes are always drawn as polka dots. So you can just draw a bunch of polka dots. And ribosomes make proteins for your cells. So you can go ahead and find ribosomes on your sheet. Function, it makes proteins. I call these guys the bakery. Well, remember what makes your cell the cell are the proteins that your cell makes. So your stomach cell is a stomach cell because it makes one kind of protein. And your brain cells are different cells because they make a different protein. Well, for years, we didn't know what the nucleolus did. And then one day, we got the technology needed to take the nucleolus out. Well, if you think of, of this as a town, and these are all buildings in the town. You guys know that the town, the buildings in the town aren't as old as the town. Raleigh was incorporated, I want to say in like 1740 something. I might be off on my dates, but it was in the 1700s. But you know most of the buildings around here haven't been here since the 1700s. The old buildings have fallen apart and we've just built new ones. Well, your organelles are the same. They'll fall apart and we just make new ones. So again, if you think of this as a town, and this is your, your property, okay? you own the bakery. When the bakery gets old, you want to you know, spruce it up a bit. You're going to tear it down, and you're going to build a better bakery. Well, going back to the nucleolus, they took the nucleolus out, and for a little while, the cell seemed to be fine. But then the cell started to die. And when they studied the dying cells, they noticed the ribosomes were disappearing. Well... What happened, what happened was, when the nucleus came out, once the ribosomes, once these bakeries fell apart, the cell didn't know how to make new ones. The, ribos the nucleolus actually tells your cells how to make ribosomes. And without ribosomes, 
You can't make proteins. If you don't have proteins, you die. So with nucleolus, only eukaryotes have a nucleolus because they're the only ones that have a nucleus. So here are my ribosomes again. So the function is where proteins are made. Now, every cell in nature has a ribosomes. Prokaryotes have ribosomes, eukaryotes have ribosomes. Because remember, what makes each cell different is the proteins that it makes. And so, without proteins, your cells die. So, like I mentioned, all those little polka dots there are going to be ribosomes. Now, in the special features of the extra characteristics column, some of them just float around, like you see here. And just so you know, the ones that float around make proteins for that cell to use. Well, others are attached to a different organelle called the endoplasmic reticulum, which we're going to talk about next. But some of your ribosomes float around, and some of your ribosomes are stuck to something. Well, they're stuck to, they can be stuck to something called the ER. So on your page, you'll see what's called the endoplasmic reticulum. I call this the subway. Everybody knows what a subway is. Subways are tunnels underground that we move things with. Well, remember, the cytoplasm is actually a thick goo. Well, the cell needs to let things move around, so I need some kind of subway system to move things around in, and that's the job of this thing called the endoplasmic reticulum. Now, we're not going to write this stuff here. I'm going to tell you what to write. For function, the function of the endoplasmic reticulum is a subway. Its job, it is a tunnel that lets things move around on the inside of the cell. That's its job. That's its function. Under types of cells, eukaryotes. Eukaryotes have an endoplasmic reticulum. Bacteria do not. And then under special characteristics, you need to know that there's two types. Rough ER gets its name because it looks bumpy. And it's bumpy because it has ribosomes attached to it. Well, ribosomes make proteins, so it makes sense that the subway moves proteins. Now, if you've never seen a subway before, like, for example, Washington, D.C., the metro, the subways are color-coded. There's the red subway line, there's the blue subway, subway line, and they go different places. Well, the tunnels in your cells go different places. So the rough ER gets its name because it's bumpy, and its job is to move proteins around inside of your cell. The smooth ER gets its name because, as you can see, it looks smooth. So this is your rough ER. It's bumpy. Here's your smooth ER. And the smooth ER gets its name because it's smooth. And it doesn't move proteins. It moves lipids. So on your chart, the function, these are tunnels that let things move around, the type of cell, eukaryotes. For a picture, it's basically a bunch of tubes, which is why I call it the subway. And then under special characteristics, you got two types. You got the smooth ER, which moves lipids, and you got the rough ER, which moves proteins. Which then leads us to something called the Golgi apparatus. Again, don't write this stuff. I'm going to tell you what to write. The Golgi apparatus is also called the Golgi body. It's called the Golgi complex. I call it your post office. Everybody knows what a post office does. When you need to mail something, that's the job of the post office. You put your letter in an envelope or you put your present in a box and you take it to the post office and they mail it for you. Well, the function of the Golgi body is basically to mail things out of the cell. So anything the cell needs to get rid of, it might be a waste product, or it might be something that it's made and it needs to send it to another cell, like a hormone. But anything the cell needs to ship out, the Golgi body's going to do that. Now, when you go to the post office, you better have your letter in an envelope. Or you better have that present inside of a box. Well, when we talk about envelopes or boxes in your cell, these things are called vesicles. So somewhere on your sheet, add vesicles. Okay. Vesicles are like your envelopes. So anything that your cell needs to send out, you take it to the post office. And the post office is your Golgi. It puts it in a box, and that box is called a vesicle, and then it sends it out of the cell. Under cell types, 
put eukaryotes, not plants and animals, eukaryotes. Prokaryotes do not have this guy. Now, you also have this thing called a lysosome. Anytime you see lice, remember lice means to destroy. Now again, I'll tell you what to write. I call lysosomes the wrecking balls or the bulldozers. Now remember what I said, the buildings in the town usually aren't as old as the town. Eventually the buildings get old and you're the property owner. You need to be in business. So you're going to tear down that old building so you can build a new, better building. Well, when the parts of the cells start to fall apart, you have these things called lysosomes. They're your wrecking balls. So their function is to destroy other organelles that are starting to fall apart. They're found in animal cells only. So here's the difference. Okay. Up at the top where it says plants or animals, we've changed that to type of cell, and we've been putting all cells or we've been putting eukaryotes. Well, here, put a star next to lysosome because on your test, you're gonna be asked differences between plant and animal cells. Here's one of them. These guys are found only in animal cells. So like I said, these are what I call the wrecking balls or the bulldozers. They're, picture, they're just drawn like circles. So you've got a lot of circles in cells. A circle could be a vesicle, a circle could be a lysosome, it could also be something called a vacuole, which you're going to see in a second. Okay. But their job is basically to tear apart organelles that are starting to fall apart so your cells can build a new one pretty fast. Now, like I mentioned, we have these things called vacuoles. I call vacuoles your closet because you use your closet to store things. So the function of the vacuole is basically to store things for the cells. Now, vacuoles are found in eukaryotes, but we do need to talk about how there is a difference between plant cells and animal cells. Both of them have vacuoles. But in the case of plant cells, plant cells tend to have one really big vacuole. Well, that's because plants have to store water. They can't get up and find something to drink when they get thirsty. So in the case of plants, their vacuoles store water, and they tend to have one really big one. In the case of animal cells, we tend to have lots of little small ones. So vacuoles look like all these little itsy bitsy bubbles inside of animal cells. And in animal cells, they tend to store something that we can't make. We can't make sugars. So a lot of our vacuoles store sugars. So this is also a difference between plant cells and animal cells. They both have vacuoles, but plant cells tend to have one big vacuole that stores water, and animal cells tend to have lots of small vacuoles that store sugars. Now, here's another one you're going to put a star next to, chloroplast. Only, well, i got to change this around. You guys know that the chloroplast is green, and the chloroplast is where photosynthesis occurs. And remember, photosynthesis is the making of sugar. Well, on here it says it's found in plant cells. Well, I want you to note, please, it's also found in some bacteria. Some bacteria are green. Some bacteria can do photosynthesis. And I also want you to put that it's put in algae. Seaweed is not a plant. Seaweed is an algae. That's why we call it an algae and not a plant. So where it's found, it's found in plant cells. It's also found in algae, and it's found in some bacteria. But put a star next to this one, because animals don't have this. And you guys know that chloroplast stores chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a pigment that's green, and plants use it to trap sunlight. And we're going to talk about photosynthesis later on, so we'll talk about how chloroplasts work. I skipped one. You then have something called, I gotta position myself here, sorry. You then have something called the mitochondria. I call the mitochondria the gas station. Some people call it the powerhouse. But I like the term gas station because we all know what a gas station is. When your car needs gas,
gas, which is energy, you go to the gas station and you fill up. Well, your cells have a gasoline in it, and that gas is called ATP. So what I want you to put for function is the mitochondria makes ATP for adenosine triphosphate. Your mitochondria makes ATP. And ATP is the gasoline that your cells need in order to work. So just like your car uses up gasoline, so you have to go to the gas station and refill your gas tank, your cells will use up this chemical called ATP, and the mitochondria's job is to make more of it. All cells have mitochondria, even some bacteria. Now, some bacteria, let me put it this way. Let's change that around a little bit. Eukaryotes have mitochondria. Some prokaryotes do, and we'll talk more about that later. And the mitochondria is always drawn looking like a brown bean. The chloroplast is drawn looking like a green bean. The mitochondria is drawn looking like a brown bean. But the mitochondria is the gas station. It does something called cellular respiration. Respiration you think of as breathing, but that's not what respiration really is. And the job of the mitochondria is to make ATP. Now, something else that animal cells don't have is a cell wall. Well, you guys have heard of cell walls a lot. The purpose of the cell wall is to give strength to the plant. We have bones that let us stand up. Well, plants need to stand up due to the sunlight, and they have a cell wall. Now, animal cells do not have cell walls. Plant cells do. But please also put algae have cell walls, and also put that some bacteria have cell walls. And we'll talk about that when we get to all those different creatures. But this is another star, because this is a difference between a plant cell and an animal cell. But the function of this cell wall is basically to help the plant stand up. It's made of a really, really, really thick sugar called cellulose. And you guys know that cellulose is a sugar because it ends in OSE. And it's actually found on the outside of a plasma membrane. Remember, every cell in nature has a plasma membrane. So this would be the plasma membrane right here. And you can see that the cell wall is on the outside. And it's a wall, very much like a building. So that's why plant cells tend to be square in shape. Now, we have something called the cytoskeleton. What I want you to put for the cytoskeleton, it's basically like the bones of a cell. You have a skeleton to give you shape. You have a skeleton to help hold things together. You have a skeleton to help protect your organs. Well, your cells also have these protein fibers that act like bones. And that's what we call your cytoskeleton. So with the function, it basically is the skeleton of the cell. It gives it shape, it helps protect the organelles. It's found in eukaryotes. And don't worry about this part here, just know it's made from proteins. Now, we also use proteins for cilia and flagella. Both of these are used in cell movement. Now, for type of cell, some prokaryotes have cilia or flagella, and some eukaryotes have cilia and flagella. So we can't put plants and animals, we can't put all cells, we can't put prokaryotes, we can't put eukaryotes. Some bacteria have these guys, and some eukaryotes do. Now if you have cilia, you look fuzzy. Cilia are all these little short hairs, and they actually row. They act like oars. In you and I, we have cilia lining our trachea. Your trachea is your windpipe. If you could cut your windpipe open, it's fuzzy. And those cilia move to help sweep trash away from your lungs. Now, some cells have flagella. Flagella are basically like whips that they swim with. Now, ladies, you don't have any cells that have flagella. Guys, you make sperm. Now, I 
don't think this one is on your sheet, so I want you to add it, please, somewhere in the margin. Centrioles are, are pretty important. Centrioles are used whenever we need to make a new cell. Now, they're only used in making a new cell, so most of the time they just sit there and do nothing. But when we talk about making new cells, which are called mitosis and meiosis, we're going to talk about these guys. They are found only in animal cells, and you're going to have two of them. And I call these my fishermen. Sometimes I call them my cowboys. And you'll see why when we get to that. But please add centrioles somewhere on your page. They're animal cells only, and they they're going to help us make new cells. So most of the time they do nothing, but they're there and they're important and we're going to talk about it. So please make sure you note the major differences between plant cells and animal cells. Animal cells have those little centrioles we talked about. Animal cells also have the lysosomes, which are the bulldozers, the wrecking balls. So you've got stars next to those. Plant cells have a cell wall. They have one big vacuole, while animal cells have lots of little ones. And plant cells have chloroplast. So on your chart, you should have a star next to all those things to help you remember that that's where they're different.